Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well. First things first. Next week's video will be our monthly Q and A. So please post your questions either in the comment section or in the Ask Dao Yi channel on the Dao Yi Discord or email me at hai.yang at daoyi.org. Every so often, I receive questions related to breathing in martial art practice. Having provided brief answers individually to community members in the past, I think it's best to talk about breathing in a dedicated video. We all know that breathing is important in martial art practice, not only for essential human function but more so for its strong impact on the execution of martial art techniques and movements. Especially when managed well, breathing can accelerate movement speed and strengthen muscle impact. So, understanding the intricates of breathing can make your practice more effective and efficient. Topics covered in today's video include first, breathing in Chinese culture, second, breathing in Taoist practice. Third, breathing in martial art. Fourth, principles of breathing. Fifth, misperceptions of breathing. Sixth, demonstration. And seventh, takeaways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. First, breathing in Chinese culture. <clears throat> the Chinese term for breathing consists of two characters, Hu Xi. Hu means inhalation, while Xi means exhalation. Many of you might be aware of a device called Tuo Yue or bellows, which is used to blow air into a furnace to strengthen the fire. The ancient Chinese associated the function of a Tuo Yue to the function of the lungs. Since the Tuo Yue was considered to have a close relationship with the strength of a fire. Breathing activity was likewise considered to have a close relationship with vital energy. In TCM, breathing is also considered a part of a key energy circulation in the body, called Zhong Qi or Gathering Qi. The energy that nourishes the heart and the lungs and forms the basis for the involuntary functions of heartbeat and respiration. Zhong Qi consists the lungs in controlling Qi and respiration and the heart function of governing the blood and the blood vessels. That is why TCM practitioners pay special attention to breathing. To the best of my knowledge, the earliest written record of the term Tuo Yue in a Taoist context is found in the book Dao De Jing, authored by Lao Zi and traditionally recognized as the founder of Taoism. In the Dao De Jing, he said, quote, Tian Di Zhi Jian Qi Yu Tuo Yue Hu, Xi Er Bu Qi Dong Er Yu Chu, Duo Wen Shuo Qiong Bu Ru Shou Zhong. End quote. Translation It's not the space between heaven and the earth like a bellows. It is empty without being exhausted. The more it works, the more it comes out. Much speech less inevitable to silence. Better to hold fast to the void. End translation. By the way, the word Shu is very confusing since it has multiple meanings and pronunciations. Here it is pronounced Shu, which means many. So, by observing the Tuo Yue, a commonplace device used to blow air into a furnace, Chinese people understood the importance of breathing. Now, let us look at the Taoist perspectives of breathing in the next topic. Topic 2. Breathing in Taoist Practice Breathing in Taoist practice 
has evolved over thousands of years. Initially, doubts used to focus on physical respiratory activities and gradually, over millennia, revolutionized it into an energy breathing concept. There are many old methods in use even today at the early stage of breathing related practices. For example, Tu Na, another name of Hu Xi or breathing, is a practice that integrates deep breathing activity with physical movements for the purpose of health. Especially with the development of Dao's internal alchemy or Xiu Dao, breathing as an internal energy refinement practice has become a fundamental concept in Taoism. It is critical to understand the differences between daily breathing and Taoist internal breathing since they are two entirely different things. I have many prior Xiu Dao videos talking about Taoist internal breathing and I recommend you check them out to get a better understanding of the original meaning of breathing in the perspective of Taoist internal practice. Link is in the description. Also worth noting is that many Taoist breathing methods have existed for thousands of years. In terms of the physical breathing categories, the practices can be oriented around inhalation, exhalation, as well as breath pausing, among many others. I will talk more about this topic in the future. Breathing is also a key aspect of the three internal style of martial arts. Since martial art practice can provide both health and combat benefits, different breathing patterns and orientations have to be applied specifically in order to maximize the benefits of each. Incorrect application of a breathing method will not only hinder your practice but will also harm your health. So, you have to differentiate between breathing in energy refinement practice and breathing in martial art practice. This is one of the primary motivations behind this video. So, how should a martial art practitioner breathe? That brings us to the Next topic. Topic 3 Breathing in Martial Art. There are different breathing patterns in martial art practice. For the sake of simplicity, I will only introduce the most popular patterns today. Martial art practice, no matter internal or external, should follow the same breathing pattern. So, if you practice any Chinese martial art, you will find this video useful. The most popular breathing patterns are first, natural breathing or zi ran hu xi. Second, shun shi, abdominal breathing or shun shi hu xi. Third, ni shi, abdominal breathing or reverse breathing or ni shi hu xi. Fourth, Chest breathing or Xiong Hu Xi. Let me explain them one by one. First, natural breathing. In martial art practice, breathing is often intentionally controlled by the mind, which means a practitioner intentionally coordinates the mind with the physical movement. In other words, breathing has to follow the body's movements under the guidance of the mind. This is not natural breathing since there is an intentional coordination between breathing and a martial movement. So, what is natural breathing? Well, natural breathing is a breathing pattern that is not intentionally controlled by the mind. It is important to know that Natural breathing or breathing without mental involvement does not imply a lack of coordination between movements and the breathing. 
The key point here is that the coordination should occur naturally. This breathing pattern can be used by practitioners at any skill level, both beginners and experts alike. At an advanced level, this breathing pattern should not be ignored since it can provide some unique benefits that a beginner level practitioner cannot reach. For example, a higher level of managing relaxation among many others. Second, Shun Shi Abdominal Breathing This is the breathing pattern in which the chest maintains a neutral state with intentional lower abdominal movements. This is commonly known as deep breathing since the word deep here implies the involvement of the abdomen. In the internal style of martial art, deep abdominal breathing is also called deep breathing or shen hu xi. Of course, there are no respiratory organs in the lower abdomen. In shun shi abdominal breathing, the lower abdomen expands during inhalation and contracts during exhalation. Again, the chest remains in a neutral state throughout the process of shun shi abdominal breathing. Compared to the natural breathing, shun shi abdominal breathing goes physically much deeper as the lower abdomen gets involved, but the chest will remain at the same stage. Third, Ni Shi Abdominal Breathing or Reverse Breathing Reverse breathing is the most frequently used pattern in the internal style of martial arts, especially during the Fajin movement. That is the only correct breathing pattern. In reverse breathing, the lower abdomen contracts during inhalation and expands during exhalation. Of course, reverse breathing is also a form of deep breathing since the lower abdomen gets involved, as in Shun Shi abdominal breathing. I emphasize the importance of reverse breathing in all my videos that mention Fa Jin. Reverse breathing is absolutely critical for Fa Jin practice. In other words, there is no Fa Jin without reverse breathing. So, if you have a hard time mastering Fa Jin, make sure to first practice reverse breathing. You should also pay close attention to the coordination between your speed of your breathing and the speed of your movement. They should be coordinated and integrated, or else your Fa Jin effect will be hindered. Fourth, chest breathing. Chest breathing is the breathing pattern in which the lower abdomen maintains a neutral state and the chest expands during inhalation and returns to neutral state after exhalation. Even though chest breathing is not as popular as the abdominal breathing and the reverse breathing, it is actually more suitable in some movements. There are other breathing methods as well such as breathing with the sound or with a strong vocalization. However, in the internal cells, vocalization should be subtle and coordinated with the movement of Fa Jin. I have a video introducing vocalization, link is in the description. So, those were some typical breathing patterns used in martial art practice. Now, I'd like to introduce my preferred breathing pattern, which I called Zi Ran Ni Shi Hu Xi, or Natural Reverse Breathing. Of course, reverse breathing is the most practical for Fa Jin practice, but at the same time, reverse breathing normally is done fast. So, you should intentionally practice reverse breathing at a regular or natural pace. I have been using natural reverse breathing for decades and it also yielded good results for my students. I recommend you all 
adopt natural reverse breathing going forward, and I'm sure you will notice a drastic improvement in your practice. By the way, some great martial artists such as Xue Dian promoted combining the breathing method of a Xiu Dao practice with martial art breathing patterns. A truly unique martial art phenomenon back in the 1920s in China. That is a very advanced topic that I will save for a future video. I will limit today's discussion to the physical aspect of breathing patterns used in martial art practice. Having talked about the types of breathing patterns, let us now look at some important breathing related principles in the next topic. Topic 4 Principles of Breathing The existence of multiple breathing patterns can confuse any practitioner. Introducing basic principles will help you understand this topic better. Today, I will introduce two principles related to breathing practice. They are first, first master movement, then master breathing. Second, do not hold your breath before Fa Jin. Let me explain them one by one. First, first master movements, then master breathing. Whenever you study a new movement or a routine, you should first focus on the physical movements. You can simply breathe naturally while you practice your movements. After you have mastered the movements, you should shift your focus to the coordination between movements and the breathing patterns. Failing this, not only will your movements be stiff but your breathing as well. Side effects may include stress on the chest, dizziness, and shortness of breath all of which can be avoided by using the correct breathing pattern. Second, do not hold breath before Fa Jin. In martial practice, especially during Fa Jin, many people try to hold their breath before power release. It may look correct to some people, but in reality, it is totally wrong. An advanced life of Fa Jin naturally integrates quite a few elements simultaneously, including muscle tension, speed, mental intention, breathing pattern, and body structure adjustment, among others. So, holding your breath will violate the natural way of power execution, which would result in suboptimal or zero Fa Jin. Very often, People misunderstand Fa Jin and then criticize it for nothing. <laughs> Again, good Fa Jin should be done naturally. Any apparent accumulation of so-called strength is just a pretentious gesture that may look pleasing in wushu performances, but it's just wrong according to the traditional standard. If you want to practice Fa Jin and are currently unable to do so, I recommend you focus on basic practice and good Fa Jin will occur naturally. That's my honest advice to art practitioners. Those were two basic but very important principles for today. There's a lot more in store for the future. Now, let's clarify a couple of common misperceptions in the next topic. Topic 5. Misperceptions Misperceptions occur across the board in the internal cells, and the breathing is no exception. Today, let me talk about a couple of them. First, breathing is a natural part of daily life and the martial art is about the power and speed. So, there's no need to focus on breathing. Second, powerful Fa Jin needs strong breathing as breathing is closely related to martial power. Now, let me clarify them one by one. First, breathing is a natural part of daily life and martial art is about power and speed, so there's no need to focus on breathing. Big mistake. 
any physical movement, including martial art movements, can be traced back to daily life. In other words, any martial art movement is just a skill resulting from intentional practice. Martial practice helps to gain the necessary skill in a comparatively shorter period of time. Martial movements usually involve a drastic change of pace compared to other daily activities, so it is absolutely essential to adjust your breathing according to the movement. This is also true for other activities that involve any physical exercise. So, even though breathing is a natural part of a daily life, you still need to practice breathing according to the demands of your martial art practice. Second, powerful Fa Ji needs strong breathing as breathing is closely related to martial power. Another huge mistake. As I have just mentioned, a powerful Fa Ji requires many factors. Stronger Fa Ji is related to breathing patterns, but there is no correlation between the power released during Fa Ji to the power of your breath. Also, I want to ask the people who believe in this what they exactly mean by strong breath. You cannot make your breath strong. You achieve Fa Jin with accurate coordination between multiple elements and not by merely overemphasizing just one element out of many. Those were two very common misperceptions. Now, let's move on to the demonstration section. Topic 6 Demonstration Today, I will demonstrate a part of the Xing Yi Five Elements Linking Form. In this small section, pay attention to the coordination between movements and breathing. As I mentioned before, Fa Jin should be executed naturally. Natural and effortless Fa Jin should be your ultimate goal in Fa Jin practice. Today, I will demonstrate part of the five element linking form in both slow and fast speed so that you'll be able to observe the coordination between breathing and physical movement. So now, slow motion. <laughs> Now, fast speed. <laughs> Topic 7 Takeaways. First, in Chinese culture, breathing is considered a vital life activity, including both respiratory and energy breathing. Second, the Taoist practice involves many types of breathing practices, but overall, breathing is considered one of the fundamental practices in the energy refinement process. Third, any Chinese martial art, especially the internal styles, apply different breathing patterns to strengthen the martial impact on opponents. Again, Different breathing patterns serve different purposes, and choosing the right one is important. Fourth, principles of breathing. First, first master movement, then master breathing. Second, do not hold your breath before Fa Jin. Fifth, misperceptions of breathing. First, Breathing is a natural part of a daily life and the martial art is about power and speed, so there is no need to focus on breathing. Second, powerful Fa Ji needs strong breathing as breathing is closely related to martial power. Remember, those are misperceptions and should be avoided in your practice. Make sure to check out the demonstration section to get an idea of the coordination involved between movements and the breathing in the Xing Yi Five Elements Linking Form. That brings us to the end of today's video. 
A quick reminder to post your questions for the next week's monthly Q&A either in the comments or on the Ask Dao Yi channel or by email. Thank you for watching. See you next time and enjoy your practice.